moment, it's time we welcomed our market master for the day. Nilesh Shah, Managing Director of Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company, has joined us. Good morning, Nilesh. Always a pleasure having you with us. Uh, well, uh, markets are at elevated levels just before the earnings season. Uh, how does it feel? Are you going out and buying or uh, are you keeping the powder dry? No, we don't take cash call. Okay. We remain fully invested across our funds. And uh, yes, the flows have been very strong and markets are near all-time high level. So obviously it's a difficult task. For 24 years of my career, I used to pray that God, please ask FIIs to buy today so that my investors can make money. Yes, today my prayer is that God, please ask FII to sell so that I can buy stocks cheap for my investors and make them money. <laughs> okay. okay, that's interesting. But what about, what are you advising your investors to do now? I mean, what are the pockets that still look good? I know it's tough because in a market like this, you know, every day when you get asked what should you buy, it's a struggle. But um, we have to ask you anyway, what should one buy? So we have been advocating our customers that the easy money making part of market is over. That was probably there in November and December 2016. Now the hard part of making money in the market has come. There could be you know, volatility in the market going ahead. So please invest on a systematic investment plan basis. Please invest for a longer term duration. Please maintain your asset allocation. Mm -hmm. Spread your bets across large cap, multi cap, small cap, mid cap. But don't invest in lump sum. Come through systematic investment. And if there is volatility in the market, don't get deterred by it. Try to take advantage of it. Okay. Nice sales pitch, uh, Nilesh. Uh, well, uh, uh, what uh, would you look at sectorally? Uh, is uh, it's going to start off with the IT companies? Avoid. Uh, again, we are far more bottom-up stock pickers rather than top-down sector pickers. But uh, clearly within IT sector today, you are seeing huge amount of headwinds. Globally, growth is slowing down. Second, we are seeing IT companies still sitting on cash and not willing to return cash to the investors. We have seen globally when one large IT company decided to pay back to investors which had hitherto never declared a dividend, suddenly the stock appreciated. So we expect IT companies to deliver something like that in order to boost up ROE and in turn prices. Okay, that's on IT companies. I wanted you to flesh out this theme of capital goods a bit more because, you know, everyone's talking about a turnaround in the CAPEX cycle. We've not seen any great evidence of that just yet, but stocks like LNT are nevertheless at 52-week highs. Um, what interests you here in this pocket? So in the capital goods and industrial sectors, we are seeing that the, there are a couple of trends which are working out. One, the government has the budgetary you know, ability to spend money. And their spending is more related to road sector, which is going to be beneficial to construction companies. It's going to be spent on railway, which will benefit companies which are engaged in that sector. And the third thing could be related to urban infrastructure and smart cities and so on and so forth. So there is one segment of capital goods and industrial which is going to be benefited from the government spending. Bulk of that is known and bulk of that is priced into the market. The second segment is related to whole focus of government on affordable housing. Lots of steps have been taken in budget to push affordable housing in terms of increasing the definition of affordable housing from built-up area to carpet area, giving tax exemption, giving infrastructure status, giving interested subvention to consumers, allowing EPFO subscribers to take out 90% of their retirement corpus for buying of house. All these things we believe will create a push in the affordable housing segment. And instead of buying real estate companies which are developing affordable housing, we are far more focused on ancillary sectors which are going to benefit from the affordable housing boom. They are building material suppliers, they are cement uh, makers, they are housing finance companies and so on and so forth. So this, we believe, is the way to probably play the industrial and capital goods sector.
Okay, but uh, I mean, this was exactly the theme we were discussing with Udain just before uh, uh, we invited you, uh, Nilesh. But uh, cement stocks, uh, haven't they gone up a goodish bit? Uh, I'm just reading out some of the um, uh, stocks have gone up like 60, 70 percent in the cement space. I mean, look at India cement, sir. Uh, I think 78 percent year to date up. Uh, Orient Paper, Prism Cement, Kakatiya. Uh, JK Cement, all of them are up about, uh, you know, 30, 40 percent. Still value? No, there's no value in building materials. There was value in November, December oh. 2016 period where due to demonetization, everyone thought that there's an end to the building material companies. <laughs> they have all bounced back very, very smartly from those levels. And clearly there is no value. And which is why we are taking a longer term call to invest into this company. Uh, this companies have one big advantage is that a lot of them were facing competition from unorganized sector, mm. not much in cement, but much more in building materials. Now, this unorganized players who were not paying taxes properly, who were not paying minimum wages properly, they are all coming under pressure because of GST, because of demonetization, mm. because of legislation which makes payment of salaries and wages by mm. way of bank, mm. by way of check. So there will be a shift from unorganized sector to organized sector. Of course, there will be consolidation in our organized sector and there will be few large companies emerging from there. But by the time that happens, the existing listed large mid-cap companies will benefit from this trend and they'll be able to make money. Mm. Okay. Well, well um, I just want to point out that a couple of stocks are moving to new highs. Uh, Indigo that I mentioned is now up almost on a 1.5%, a fresh 52-week high over there. And look at some of these other names, names like Petronet LNG are surging now, almost 3% higher. That was a stock that Ashwini also referred to, a uh, new high for Petronet LNG at about 423 rupees. Um, Nilesh, uh, any of these spaces that would interest you? I know, you know, y you haven't really been recommending uh, spaces like aviation, etc. But wanted to know what your view is now because there are certain regulatory issues improving for the aviation space. Crude has fallen quite a bit since the last, uh, since at least over uh, six months or over a year. Um, is there um, any potential that you see in this area? So one thing we have to be constantly aware of is that we should not be investing into company because other things have moved mm. and this thing hasn't moved. Uh, there's no point in investing on a relative basis. You have to invest based on your understanding of the sector. Unfortunately for us, for the aviation sector, for a large part of our career, we were brought up on Warren Buffett's advice mm. that if someone had shot down Wright Brothers, so many investors would not have lost money in aviation sector. <laughs> now, obviously, that's more on a lighter vein. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that in the aviation sector, the experience of investors have not been very encouraging over past many years. And yes, there are exciting changes happening in the aviation sector, but we need to understand it more and we need to see it over a cycle before we can take investment calls. So maybe people who can understand aviation sector, it's a great buy for them. For us, we need to study it in detail. Okay, before we let you go, your top sector. Uh, our top sector, again, Lata, I'll say it's bottom-up approach okay. rather than top-down. Okay. But within that, I find this mega trend uh, developing on unorganized sector ceding market share to okay. organized sector, courtesy the brand consciousness, demonetization and GST rollout, mm. we will see this trend accelerating. And there are host of companies in auto components, chemicals, specialty chemicals, textiles, garments, building materials, where this trend will be visible. Mm. And over there, valuations in some sectors have become expensive. Mm. But if you can take a longer term view, you will appear, you will get many winners from that trend.